All right, good morning, everybody. It's Saturday, April 15th, and we're gonna go out and do a group Jeep run today. First group Jeep run I've ever done. I've done a couple solos, but today we're gonna go out with a group and go to Vulture City uh, Ghost Town up by Wickenburg, old ghost, uh, gold mining town that uh, the remaining buildings and stuff are turned into a Western tourist attraction, but we're gonna take some dirt roads and off-road trails to get there, and it's a group event today, so we'll try and show you a little bit of it. It got the GoPro in the Jeep, and hopefully I'll be able to show you some of the stuff around the uh, attraction itself. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but if I can, I will. All right, we gotta get going, get gas, get some snacks, and uh, get up there to the meeting point. All right, so we are on our way and rolling. And we are gonna do a water crossing today. The Hacienda River still has some water in it, so we're gonna see how that goes. Um, but we are, we are getting going up here along this uh, little service road along the US 60. And I believe it's gonna be a fun day and see what all we encounter along the way. All right, so we are about to cross the Hacienda River here and there is some water in it, so we're gonna see how this goes. We are already in four high. It's gonna be a little bit muddy in some spots, some sandy areas, this is why we aired down. Everyone across the water. No, we're still coming. Ooh, a little bit soupy in here. Let's uh, wait till we can get a run across this little soupy area here. I don't want to get stuck. Some soft sand in here. It's a pretty wide river. We'll kind of hang back until that uh, Cherokee gets across it. Okay, now it's our turn. And so once we get out of the river bottom here, which we're still in, because you can see all the sandy, soft uh, silt, and we're gonna do a hill climb up there ahead of us if you see the Jeeps already going up. I'll let them get a little headway on us. Shouldn't really tailgate too much. But yet I want to see the line that everybody's taken. to straddle this gully here. Let them get through this. before we do our thing.
has a nice little climb. Look at the views out here. You just gotta love this place. Okay, up ahead here somewhere is a crested saguaro, which is a very rare saguaro, but I don't think we have time to stop according to what they just said on the radio because we're on a bit of a time crunch. They said it's on the left side somewhere. I'm trying to find it. Hopefully the GoPro might pick up on it. Um, I'll have to look online and find a picture of a crested saguaro to uh, put in this video to show you guys. I don't know where it's at. They just said it was on the left. Basically, instead of an arm, it just grows into a, you could call it a crown or something like that. Um, it's a, a kind of deformed, but I don't know where it's at. I'm assuming it's still up ahead of us. I don't think we passed it. I mean, you've got a, about 15 Jeeps in front of us, so. I don't see it. the group is that far up ahead little wildflowers here again the rainy season um, the excessive rainfall that we had this winter really brought the flowers out So for my East Coast friends who watch the channel, what do you think of the Arizona desert out here? It's pretty cool. A whole different way of wheeling than uh, back east. All this is public land. Back east, it's all private land, and all you have is Roush Creek Off-Road Park and uh, Anthracite Off-Road Park, but those are kind of created. Um, this is all more natural stuff out here. And like I said, it's all either BLM, US government land, um, national forest land, or state of Arizona trust land. So a lot more freedom to uh, four-wheel out here. As long as you uh, do things the right way, they keep these trails open. Start littering them up and doing stuff you're not supposed to, then they start closing them down. But that's the great thing about here. Everybody has respect. So we have all this open land to play in. here and we're a little bit dirty and no doubt might have uh, gotten a couple of uh, 
pinstripes we'll see when we wash it but you can see them in the dust a little bit but we're here the only thing is i uh totaled out my gopro battery before i got here i wanted to film entering into the property through the gate but uh i wiped the battery out just on the trip out here so uh we got her charging now hopefully she's charging even while the jeep is shut off and i'll have a full battery by the time we leave here so we shall see but we're here and then we're gonna soon go walk around and check everything out i gotta find out if i'm allowed to film in here or not and if i am i'm gonna take this camera with me and do some okay so they give you this nice uh, laminated map and handout so you can see what your tour and it's a self-guided tour and it tells you uh each building and what it's used for and on the other side is a description so hopefully i'll be able to explain some stuff to you here but i am allowed to film so we're going to show you some stuff okay so i'm five foot six and i'm standing in front of this thing so that should give you an idea how big this engine is i don't know i'll have to look on the sheet maybe it says what, what it ran on um i don't see it number one no uh, i don't see it but uh where is it number one where is it powerhouse it was a steam engine i guess no oh, no this is a world war one submarine diesel engine so that's where it came out of a world war one submarine but that's what powered all the equipment in the mine towards the end of its uh, run. So this is the assay office and guard area. This old car here, um, obviously a prop, but uh, body is in pretty decent shape, all things considered. Like I said, things don't rust out here like they do back east in the moist climates, but this building built in 1884 and we'll step back again you can see the construction is um, native rock and of course the sun is in a bad angle for us because of the time of day um, but native stone construction and again the corrugated sheet metal roofing some adobe block up there some of this stuff has been rebuilt the ruins are still original but They've been rebuilt and refurbished a little bit like our Tamaqua train station. So we'll go check out inside. Still a little too dark, but um, you get an idea. Uh, looks like a lot of chemist equipment there. Um, I guess they tested the purity of the gold and um, back here looks like uh, a furnace. They probably smelted some of it right here. Um, Vulture gold production. During its prime mining periods, Vulture slip bar, shipped bars to the mint about once a month. Each bar was about 80 to 85 percent gold and the remainder silver. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Crude and rudimentary, but it got the job done. But again, that was this was turn of the century stuff, so they didn't have modern conveniences. <clears throat> ah, that's what it looked like. So it's been refurbished. Looks like a dining room, of some sort. I don't know if this was a home as well on the other half. Maybe the person that ran it lived here. Stairs to the upstairs. Looks like another office over here. Like I said, it's dark. I can't get it any brighter, but uh, looks like another office over here. All right, so we're heading back, and yeah, we're heading back a different way. This trail's a little bit tighter in spots, and we picked up the pace a little bit. Um, supposedly, we're going to take this a little ways, and then we're going to run down a, a wash for a while till we get back to the original trail that we were on. You can see we're near these mountains here. See what kind of pace we run going out of here. We were doing about 
anywhere from 15 to 20 miles an hour, which right now we're doing 15, so um, not bad. Moving along pretty good. Jeep's holding up and handling this like a charm. I'm quite pleased. Like I said, I just have to see how many uh, pinstripes I got out of this trip. Some of the brush is kind of close, as you can see here. It's mostly these uh, creosote bushes. The choya are back pretty far. But some of these other bushes, is pa oh, this Palo Verde tree here. I might have to get some scratch remover to uh, see if we can get some of them out. But it is what it is. It's part of four wheel, and if you're going to go on the trails, you're going to get some scratches here and there. That's kind of what I bought a Jeep for. I wanted to run trails. This is fun stuff for me. I enjoy it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now we're going to be down in the wash once we drop down off of here. Oh, when I wash this thing, it's going to be interesting to see what we uh, have <laughs> as far as scratches go. Now it's going to be a little bit wider, but a little bit choppier. We're in some softer material. Yeehaw! So when we get our monsoons out here in Arizona, this can sometimes flow uh, pretty fast. You get a good two, three inch uh, monsoon thunderstorm out here in the desert and these washes fill right up. But we haven't had any rain for a while, so it's nice and dry. It's choppy and dusty. We got into some tight quarters again. And there's no way we're not going to scrape here or here. Oh boy. Okay, back out of the wash and on a regular trail again. 9054. We've got oncoming traffic. We're going to have to find a place to pull off. Copy the oncoming traffic. Three, four, five, a line of side by side. Be to 30.
All right, so you guys saw the Crested Saguaro. We stopped to uh, take a break there and the pull out for it. And I got a picture of it for you guys to see what a Crested Saguaro actually is. Uh, somebody told me it had sustained an injury at some point in its lifespan and that's what caused it to build that crest instead of more arms. So we're on our way out. I'm not sure uh, exactly how far we are from the riverbed, but from what they said, we're pretty close. Here's another nice roll section here. Let's see what we get. 19 degrees. We had 21 degrees back there in another section, but I didn't have both microphones on, so uh, there was no audio. Now, yeah, I can see we're getting back closer to civilization now. At least it looks like it. Shouldn't have turned the camera off when I did. We went through a wash there that was pretty cool. Uh, downhill around the right turn and then back uphill. Um, that's the thing with wheeling like this is you run the camera the whole time you're out here and you got a ton of footage and, and pick and choose the best uh, to put in a video I suppose which is probably what I should do. And just keep filming download them and then pick the best spots. Also got to put the other cameras out. Um, problem is if I put the other GoPro on uh, the outside of the Jeep I have to get out to turn it on and get out to turn it off and everything else so it makes it kind of tough unless you're by yourself because then you're holding up the group doing your camera stuff unless they all kind of understand it and cut you a little slack. Now, it's like a nice little climb here. Everybody's taking her easy. Let's see which is going to be the best line here. I'm glad I had the camera on for this section. A little bit rough in here. That was a nice wheel in section to go through. pace a little bit. Well, we'll take the line the gladiator took. There's two lines that you can take here. Okay, there's the river. There's the river. Let's see the ones in front slowed down now.
she's manning the gate, I see. When the last one goes through, then you close the gate. Okay, now we're back down into the Hacienda River. As you can see, we're in the soft sand now. Because this thing can flow bank to bank. When you get a good storm, um, a couple weeks ago we wouldn't be able to cross this because of all the winter rain that we had and the snow melt from up north coming out of the Bradshaws. Um, this was flowing a lot further, harder, a lot faster, and a lot deeper. I don't want to stop in the, oh, I want to stop in that deep sand. Woohoo! We got a little squirrely there. <laughs> Yeah, the sand can bog you down and get you stuck right quick. So you really don't want to stop and lose momentum. It's kind of like driving through deep snow. If you get off the gas in the soft sand, you might not get going again. I think I want to get up out of here and onto this hard pack before I stop. So we are in the process of airing up now. We got one more tire to go before we can get home. Um, it's a little slower of a process than I thought because the pump gets hot. So we can do two tires at a time and then we gotta let it cool down and do one more tire and then let it cool down and then do the other tire. So uh, eventually I gotta get a better pump, but this does the job, runs off the battery and does it a lot quicker than a 12 volt cigarette lighter charge. But uh, we're finished up for the day. Just gonna air up that last tire and then we're gonna head home. So I had a blast. It was a fun day. Met some new people, uh, good people, and uh, just had a fun time. So uh, we're going to do this again. Um, in a month, we got another one to do um, out in Florence, and then we'll see from there. But uh, we'll try to do some other videos in the meantime. This one's going to take some work to edit up because I shot a lot of footage. So uh, we'll see. Uh, what we get and how we're going to put it together and edit it so that it's not crazy long and uh, show you the highlights and uh, the interesting places and most of it's still GoPro from the windshield because I got to figure out how to set up the other cameras and uh, learn how to use my remote control again but the remote control eats up batteries in the camera and it eats up the batteries in the remote control so you have a limited amount of time to use it but that's the only way to uh, run an external camera is to uh, remote control uh, operate it unless you want to stop the group so you can start the camera and stop the camera. So, but we'll figure something out. But anyway, we're gonna finish airing up and then we're gonna head home and maybe at least take a look at the video work we got. And, and from there we'll edit it up and put it up on the tube for you guys.